Hi, I'm Dick Balch, and if you can't trust your car dealer, who can you trust? <laughs> that showbiz, ta-ta! He <laughs> wanted me to adjust his mirror for him. <laughs> he can't see anything now. At Dick Balch Chevrolet, we don't use marijuana because we're out. <laughs> Time has changed much yes, about Dick Balsh, but not the laugh and not the smile. 18 years ago was the season of his celebrity. This is the season of his anonymity. Then he was on every TV channel seemingly all the time. I can see this shows that there's bad, I mean, unused space. All this Today, he seems rather alone with his computer and his legal papers, trying to understand what went wrong and how to make things right again. In 1970, Dick Balsh put a sledgehammer to a car and a star was born. The hair was long, the clothes were mod, a hip car salesman, a contradiction in terms. General Motors may not have liked its crazed pitch man, but people did, and people bought cars and bought lots of them, and Dick Balsh became both rich and famous. More of both than you can imagine. In 1978, the boom started to go bust. A bizarre trial. He was a witness. And the trial revealed a darker side of Dick Balsh. Dick Balsh, cocaine user. Dick Balsh, a man with a penchant for young girls. And beyond the facts were rumors, persistent rumors about drug dealing. And all of a sudden, Balsh's act didn't seem as funny as it once was. A changing image in a changing car market. Dick Balsh went broke. Millions made quickly were lost quickly. The happy image became sad. Today, if you can believe it, there is another Dick Balsh. This one perhaps as close to grown up as he's going to get. Because now I'm at, I'm at uh, uh, peace with myself, you know, which is a, a funny way to put it, but I sleep every night like a baby. Ten years later, do I use drugs today? No. Do I young girls today? No. Would I? <laughs> I got no shame. <laughs> you got no shame. They got a really good agitator. Forces the water through the clothes. This could be any appliance store in any city. The office area is busy. Salespeople are working the phones and anyone who happens to walk in. The floor is a blur of burners. And the toughest issue tackled here is which color the washer should come in. I prefer almond. Okay. But this place is different because it is owned by a man with an uncanny sense for finding customers. His name is Jack Roberts, and his commercials are the scourge of Seattle television. You cut my tie! The here they come! Look out! Oh. I'm smashing prices! Volume, volume, volume. I won't be undersold. I think uh, on television, it doesn't matter as much what you do as how often you do it. Roberts does it all on television, and the biggest punchline to these silly spots is that they work. Roberts says his TV ads have improved his business by 50%. His advertising philosophy is simple. Get the viewer's attention, no matter what it takes. And that's why we do the things we do. That's why we try chainsaws and sledgehammers and pies or cut your tire or whatever, you know, something that the people are going to remember. Robert shoots a handful of commercials at a time, paying no attention to the finer points of television production. He and his wife appear with wires dangling from their clothes, posing in shaky backgrounds with sometimes shakier material. He doesn't care. I take all the credit for my wonderful commercials. But I write them and more or less produce them and star in them, if you call it that, or act in them or act stupid in them or stand in them or whatever it is. <laughs> Roberts claims his first attempt at advertising was worse well, than his work today. I think the first commercial, I was standing in my warehouse and I was real scared, standing about like this. Come on into Jack Roberts Appliance, I'll get you a really good deal. And everybody said I was stiff as a board and really looked bad and you look scared and I was scared. So. Today, Roberts' fear of the camera is gone. In fact, it's hard to make him stop selling. When they want to buy an appliance, I want them to remember Jack Roberts. I want them to come in and see me. Right now, Roberts is planning a move to a new, larger location, an event that will undoubtedly call for some special new commercials. One thing that will never change, however, is Roberts' approach to advertising. His ridiculous commercials have him laughing all the way to the bank.
You may be surprised to know the man who starred in the outlandish Vern Funk commercials wasn't actually Vern Funk. Robert Telke became one of the most recognizable faces in the Northwest for the zany insurance commercials. One of his first in the early 90s was a Forrest Gump parody. Insurance is like a box of chocolates. With some companies, you never know what you're going to get. Telke started as an insurance agent in 1989 and worked at the Everett Vern Funk location. He told the Seattle PI it all started with just being goofy at the office, and Vern asked him to do the ads. He brought his creativity to your TV, spoofing pop culture hits like Back to the Future. I mean, come on! DWIs, SR-22s, too many tickets? Vern Funk insurance will put one off. Fuck, he hit me! Buddy! Great fault! I've seen the future of car insurance! The actual Vern Funk started the insurance company in 1952 and died in 2007 at age 75. But it's Telke who everyone associates with Vern Funk because the ads were one of a kind. If you've had an accident or ticket or DWI and you're not picky about the color it's printed on, we've got a policy for you. He rose to become president of Vern Funk in 2013 and is so popular the Vern Funk website sold t-shirts based on his ads. You don't have to frown, we won't turn you down. We can help you. He adapted with the times, embracing the World Wide Web. Get a quote on the phone or log on to the internet. His YouTube clips have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times. <laughs> hundreds of people have commented on the Cairo 7 Facebook page, sharing their favorite memories of Telki and his commercials. Log on and join the conversation. John Nicely, Cairo 7 News.